<laughs> Let's bring in Dan Miller now, the voice of the Detroit Lions, and of course, Fox Whoa. 2 sports director Dan Miller. Uh, <laughs> he's in that Zuckerberg bunker. <laughs> You're right. He's in the bunker with Mark Zuckerberg. That's right. No yeah. doubt. Dan, how you Sitting doing, my friend? Lot, waiting for an appointment. What's going on, boys? Hey, yeah, well, you know what? It's, Lions it's, going to Super Bowl. It, it's an exciting week for us, but. Have you considered, you know, the game for yourself this week? I mean, you covered an 0-16 team, and, and I'm sure you have uh, thought about a Super Bowl call and all that stuff, but just the ability to perhaps call a division championship for the first time in 30 years, have you, have you thought about that call at all? Oh, yeah. I mean, you definitely think about it, and it's um... – Man, it, it, it obviously would mean a lot. And, and I go back to a Jim Schwartz quote that I loved. And, and, I, and I think it really was just a, a wonderful encapsulation of a, of a singular moment. When they clinched the playoff spot against San Diego and he sent his guys back out on the field and he talked about that afterwards and he said, there will be a time that we won't celebrate making the playoffs, but this isn't it. And I thought that was just such a, a wonderful understanding of what that meant. You know, in other cities making the playoffs, let's face it, isn't a big deal. They do it, you know, every couple of years or in some cases, you know, every year it seems. If you're Pittsburgh, Baltimore, New England for a time, you know, teams like that, Kansas City. Uh, but that moment for Detroit was different. And I kind of look at this like that. This is a big moment. This is... If it happens, because I do respect the process and I look at these games and nothing's going to be easy about this, um, but if it happens, it's a big moment for the Lions. You know, to, to have 30 years between winning divisions, to have no home playoff games at Ford Field, yeah, man, I, I, I've thought about what this means. And, and I, I've always kind of brought myself back to earth by trying to, to remember that you do have to win, and you do have to finish this thing, and that's the most important thing right now. You know, when, when Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes got hired, um, they were not responsible for the last 60 years of futility or the last 30 years of futility, but it is something that they wear once, once you become the head coach and general manager of the Detroit Lions. And to have that kind of pressure and Dan Campbell talked about that pressure this week and staying focused and staying right just I guess my question there Dan is the ability for these guys to kind of stay level and stay steady despite you know what may happen or what may not happen uh till next week whatever the case may be just their ability to stay steady I find to be impressive is it not I think it's the life they live I think, you know, if there's one thing that I've always been really impressed, made, you know, interested in for football players, it is their ability to compartmentalize everything. Well, think of Monday, the previous week doesn't even exist. And then on to the next. Right, I think you go back as recent as this past week against Denver. I mean, there was all sorts of noise outside wondering whether or not this team, had, you know, kind of lost its mojo and, you know, was Jared got the guy and, you know, all he does is, is you know, put his blinders on, go out and have a five touchdown passes. I, I think for these guys, it, it is just the way you have to be in the National Football League. You can't ride the roller coaster. You can't, you know, live like we do in the media or like fans do, where you're up and down and good and bad. And, uh, you know, last day were a huge question now. You know, they're back up in the power rankings because they're good again and beat Denver and things like that. You have to just kind of take every day as doing the best. You, this is coach speak. Do the best you can with that day. Do the best you can with that meeting. Do the best you can with that rep and practice. And if you take care of all the little things one at a time, the big things take care of themselves. It is when you worry about the big things, I think you can even apply this to life half the time. It's when you worry about you know, big picture instead of where you are in that moment and where your feet are, that's when you get in trouble. Hey, Dan, I know Maz wants to talk to you about the, the, the young bucks on the team, so I'll let him have that. I'll go to the defensive side, and i ask you about that defensive line, Bruce Irvin out there, Josh Pascal, you see Romeo Cora with the same. 
They look like a completely different defensive line when they played against that Broncos team that have been playing pretty good at the offensive line spot. Just talk about how they got going and how they looked in that moment last past week, those last Saturday. Well, I, I mean, Brandon, that defense set the tone for that game. Yes. The offense took a little while to get going. And we've seen times this year where when the offense hasn't started quickly, all of a sudden they're down 7 nothing, 10 nothing, 14 nothing, And because that wasn't the case, the offense – could just kind of find distraction and and start moving, which they did with five consecutive touchdown drives and six out of seven to close the game. So, man, I, I think a lot of the credit for that game, while the scoreboard might say offense, was the defense. Yeah. And I think they really challenged Russell Wilson to beat them. They were sending blitzes left and right. And I, I just think that they really thought that they could put the pressure on him and that he was going to have a tough time taking advantage of that and the one thing that that Dan Campbell said to me when we the last thing we did in the week recording the pregame show for the radio he just talked about Cortland Sutton and he said basically that's job one job two and job three is stopping him because that's Russ's guy that's who Russ leans on that's who Russ throws it up to and Cam Sutton did a great job on him and there was a couple times obviously where he had to be out there by himself because they were blitzing so I thought it was just a great game plan, and I'm really intrigued now to see how they deal with Nick Mullins because, you know, do they go after him the same way, bring the blitzes, try to put the pressure on him, try to get him to make some mistakes like he did against Cincinnati, knowing that on the back end, if you don't get there, they got the best receiver in football, Addison's a hell of a player, and we all know Hawkins is a heck of a player. So to your original question, yeah, man, that defense – did a heck of a job. It was great to see Pascal break through with a sack. We've been waiting for that. Need more of it. Uh, and, and and obviously, Irvin is a guy who's still got some some juice in the engine, you know, with his 11 to 15 snaps or whatever he ends up getting. So, man, more of that is what they need, and they're going to need that this week to, to not let that crowd explode and go crazy in Minneapolis. I want to show some love to a person, and I want you to talk about his play last week. He is a catalyst for that defense, man. He gets them going, and that's number 34. That is Anzalone. When he plays like that, I mean, this team, this defense, they seem to respond different. I think Aaron Glenn has put him in great situations, especially last week, to make plays. Just talk about how he was in that game, how he's been all year for the Detroit Lions. It's another guy who had to just put his head down early in his career in Detroit because he heard a lot of people question whether or not he could play. And including me the first I'd be to first to say first it year here. yeah I mean is it probably be the first to tell you his first year he missed you know tackles and I think is the line in front of him has gotten better he's gotten better but look they they love Alex Antelone they trust Alex Antelone he gets people in the right place on that defense you know we've talked about this before but at the end of last year he's out there at times with five rookies you know trying to tell them how to play and where to go and what to do and you know, Alex is, is really, in many ways, the glue that holds that defense together. He's got over 100 tackles. Second year in a row, he's done that. Nobody for the Lions has done that in six years. So I think it's just there, there is a consistency to Alex. I think he has gotten significantly better. And, and most of what I think plagued Alex in his career was staying healthy and being able to remain on the field. And he's been able to do that. He's faster than you think he is. He certainly dissects things. Yeah. Yeah, he is. Got much better in coverage than I think he seemed to be when he first got here. So just his growth has been so important to this defense. And again, just the trust they have in him to lead those guys out there. Dan Miller joins us as he does every Wednesday. Lions, uh, of course, radio voice and the sports director of Fox 2 here in Detroit. Dan, I want to talk about the new guy. Uh, I haven't seen this guy. Uh, Ify Malafonu. I mean, uh, is, is he a new guy? Did we just get him? I mean, what, what the hell was that? <laughs> hey, hey, man. Yeah. If I told you they picked him up on waivers, would that make you high? Yes. <laughs> yes. Where'd we get him? <laughs> hey, look. The thing for Ify has been he just hasn't been able to stay healthy. And, I mean, they said after the game, look, we wanted to get him out there earlier, but I think it was a hand issue that he ran into. He's just – his biggest problem has been availability. And and now, you know, we get to see here that he's making some plays. And he's got some physical size out there, too, guys, that, that just makes a difference. And and I think it's going to be real interesting to see what they do when when uh, C.J. Gardner-Johnson comes back. I'm not going to be surprised if we get back to those three safety looks that we have seen from Aaron Glenn uh, often in the past. But, look, 
uh, based on what we've seen in a couple of weeks here from Melifonwu, it, it's exciting. And, and let's see where it goes from here. But they clearly drafted him because they thought he could play and, and moved him to safety because they thought he could play. And he's got, got some size and, and ability and can, again, dissect things. And we saw that. It's a great play he made inside the five-yard line, knocking that ball out of the receiver's hands, just coming over the top and knocking it out of there after he had it. And, man, plays like that make you want to come back for more. So, yeah, I'm, let's see what he can do because that secondary – is, is one that I think there are positions open where they're waiting for guys to make statements about what they can bring to the team. Hey, Dan, I do have a free agent for you. Uh, Justin Houston, oh, released God, from please. the Carolina <laughs> Panthers. Hey, four-time oh, Pro Bowler, God. linebacker. I'm just throwing yeah, it out there, man. I, saw, I looked it up. I, I look. I haven't looked at his tape this year. I know he had a half a sack. Oh, um, that's good. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure yeah. what's left in, in the tank for <laughs> Justin Houston or, or where he'll go, but... Uh, he says he wants to go to a contender. Look, yeah. I'm sure every team, including the Lions, is breaking down every rep he's had this year to see if there's anything out there. Because let's face it, guys, if you're a, a pass rusher and you can give a team two, three good reps a game out of the 12 to 15 sacks you get, mm. they're going to take it. So, I, again, I just don't know what he's got left right. at this point. That would be the big question. We haven't seen Tyson Alualu yet. Uh, we don't know what's going on with him, if he's going to get it anything going here this year and then i'm glad to see isaiah bugs back can you leave him can you leave him in there now please well i mean obviously with the lean out uh, they've got some issues inside and benito was a little bit nicked up during the week last week so um I, they gave bugs an opportunity to go in there and make some plays he scooped up the ball and took off down the field so i mean that's that's all good stuff the, the best thing obviously is that they could get a lean back here in a couple weeks when he's eligible again but you know, as far as Tyson, I mean, I, I think when guys come in and they did this with Irvin off the street, they haven't been playing, you just got to give them time to, to figure out, A, what they have, and B, just to get back into football shape. Because the worst thing you could do is send a guy out there when he's not ready, and then right. you're going to end up with an injury, and it's not going to do anybody any good. Hey, Dan, last one. On draft night, there was a little bit of criticism for Brad Holmes and, and the way this thing went with picking a first-round running back, passing on B. John Robinson. Um, but Jameer Gibbs and Sam Laporta, the first rookie duo in the NFL since 2006 when Reggie Bush and Marcus Colston had eight touchdowns. These two players, where would this team be without those two guys, Laporta and Gibbs? I mean... Uh, my goodness, they are performing like all pro veterans. Yeah, they wouldn't be where they are in all likelihood without those guys because, you know, you can't put a price or, or find an easy replacement for the kind of production that they've gotten from Laporta and Gibbs. I mean, five touchdowns between them in this game. First time two rookies have combined for five since the Chargers did it in 1974, which, by the way, I looked up. That was five different rookies that scored for the Chargers mm. that day, which was insane to me. Holy so I was trying to think, who was the Charger rookie in 1974? But it was five different guys. But look, Wes Ryan, Chandler. It, it's, uh, I think it was before West, but it was, uh, that was, I looked him up and I didn't recognize him. Charlie, <laughs> Charlie <laughs> Joyner? Uh, I think Charlie might have already been but it what i don't remember that being one of the names the the receiver joiner i don't remember that being one of the guys but you can look it up they, there was only one game all year where they scored enough to score five touchdowns and that was the game where it was five different guys wow. that, that scored uh in that one so uh but you know to your point ryan it's look we we love to take victory laps when when things in the draft go well and and probably ignore when things don't go well but yeah that was massive criticism uh, that night in particular uh, people wondering did Brad Holmes have any idea how a draft is to work I mean people are questioning whether he knew what he was doing on Twitter and and I get it and I, and look everybody it's, it's the biggest thing in sports where everybody can be an expert and it, it is that night that is given to, to wild opinions and and look, there are still people that would tell you that, that he was crazy to draft a running back at number 12 overall and all those things. But for right here and right now, these guys have been really important to the Lions. And Gibbs looks like exactly what they thought he was going to be, which is a weapon. Not a running back, but a weapon. And a guy that they can utilize in a lot of different ways. And 
Look, I think they feel great about this draft class. It's what he said that night. Um, they draft guys that can come in and play for them and that are going to play a role for them. And these guys are. Could you make a, a, a case for Carter and what he's done for Philadelphia? Of course you could. And you, you could make a case for probably other guys as well. But I think the Lions feel real good about what they did in, in bringing those guys in because that production right now gives over 1,000 yards. Laporta up there with the best tight ends in the league in terms of production. Man, you just don't necessarily expect that from rookies, but they've got maybe Gary Garrison, Bo Matthews, and uh, Don Woods. Maybe. Who so. yeah. <laughs> the hell? Uh, Dan, enjoy the game on Sunday. I hope they don't make you wait another week to to make that call of division champs. Thanks, buddy. We appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Dan. All right, boys. Appreciate you. Thanks. Appreciate you got it. Knows. Merry Christmas as well. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Wow. We Remember that right. call? Uh, <laughs> oh, man. That's awesome. And again, uh, download that Fox local app on your smart TV, uh, Roku, Hold Fire TV. You can watch uh, us on that Fox local app each and every day. We are going to take a break. <laughs>